Hi you guys, welcome to my gear table. I thought I would take today and just show you some of my favorite go-to pieces that I put in my pack year in and year out that have helped keep me safe on the trail, that have helped to keep me moving well on the trail, um, and also some things that I have learned that I hope are gonna help you just to um, make you faster and more efficient in aid stations and while you're racing, and give you more confidence as you're training uh, in the mountains and on the trails. All right, first and foremost, finding a good pack. I've used a ton over the years. There are two really important details about a pack that I look for. The first one is it has a lot of pockets up front. I like four to eight pockets up front because I wanna be able to access everything while I'm moving up and down a mountain, across flat terrain. I don't wanna to have to take my pack off. So these are pockets that are big and they're roomy. I can put all my food in here. I can put phone, uh, rechargeable batteries. I can also fit two bottles into them. So a lot going on here. And then of course the back has a lot of pockets where I can fit all the other required gear. Cocodona 250 has a lot of required gear. In fact, most races in in America do not have required gear. Um, the longer races, these 200 plus ones, they do, which I mean, you're out there for several days, so it's, it's good that we have required gear. This pack um, specifically, the Apex Pro by Camelback, it's not out yet, but I put about 100 miles on this already. It fits comfortably. I don't like packs to bounce around, and this one fits really well, um, and that's even with it fully packed. So one of the most important things that I like to do before a race is to run with all of the required gear. So I've already stuffed this thing with all of the required gear. Um, I've gone on mountain runs in this, some big climbing runs, and it's performing really well. All right, so now what am I putting in my pack? A jacket is of utmost importance. Now, any jacket, storm jacket, um, you want one that's waterproof, you want, this one has Gore-Tex in it. There's zippers underneath the arms so I can stay nice and cool. It's also packable. I've worn this one already for five different races and I like to buy my storm jackets a size bigger. And the reason is, is because I can get them on and off quicker and they can go over my pack if I need it to. I have a little rubber band here because I use rubber bands to wrap up all of my gear to make it nice and small and compact. It just keeps the pack organized. The second thing that I will be bringing with me at Cocodona 250 and always when I race internationally are these waterproof pants. Now, just like the jacket, I like to get the pants a size bigger so that they go on and off over my shoes um, really easily. A warm hat of some sort. If you don't like beanies, because sometimes you can overheat in a beanie, if you know it's not, there's not really a chance of it being um, super cold. At least having a bandana is important because you can put this over your ears, you can use it um, around your neck. I also like to use this just around my wrist and sometimes I'll get this wet like in a stream and then I can wipe my face down with it too. So bandana, beanie, so whenever I train, um, or if I'm racing, I like to have a second layer. This one's dry fit. And so whether it's hot or cold, this can serve two purposes. One, keeping the sun and the elements off your body to protect you, but also to give you that extra layer of warmth. We have arm sleeves. Now arm sleeves, these are awesome for keeping the sun off your body, but also if you get these wet, that evaporative cooling effect that happens keeps you nice and cool. But these are also great when it's cold. Then of course, gloves. You can never go wrong with gloves. And in fact, I usually pack two gloves, one that is more waterproof, and then these ones are more of just a soft, warm glove. But you never know what you're gonna hit in the mountains, and having warm hands is essential. A cotton bandana, this can be used for several different things. I wrap it around my hand, I tie a knot, and then I tie a knot again, and then I tuck it into my wrist. And this is so nice. I like cotton. Um, to wipe my face with, 
You can take this off and dip this also in a stream, wipe down your whole body, but you can also, when it's really hot, if you get this thing wet, lay it over your head, put your hat over it, it's like this nice flap, this wet flap um, on the back of your neck and on your shoulders. It feels really nice. It also offers that shade. But also, this has saved me. I've had a couple hard falls in the mountains and I've used cotton bandanas as my, um, as my bandage. I know that for Cocodona, they want you to have a headlamp and backup batteries, but I'll tell you what, over the years, I've kind of had some bad luck with headlamps. Sometimes I'll accidentally have a, a headlamp turn on. You know, maybe it rubs against another piece of gear and then it turns on in my pack and then the battery is, you know, it runs down. So um, there have been a couple times where my phone, uh, the light on my phone has been my headlamp. So I now run with three headlamps. The cool thing about this one, and I found this on Amazon, is it's extremely bright and you can put that right on your waist. Um, I did a 30 mile run just the other night with this on my waist and then this little tiny headlamp on my head. It was amazing how bright that was. And my thoughts when I go to the mountains are pack, so that if something happens and you have to spend the night, that you're gonna be okay. So um, that's why I always have layers. I know it's not always fun to, to pack heavy, but I think it's a great way to prepare you for race day too, because even a light pack towards the end of a race can feel really heavy. And so if you're used to running in the mountains with a heavy pack, you're just gonna be stronger, you're gonna be more enduring, and you're not gonna be surprised by the weight of required gear when you do get to the start line. So I run heavy uh, on a consistent basis to make sure not only that I'm prepared and safe in the mountains, but because I know that on race day, that pack is gonna feel even heavier than it is um, when I'm training. And so um, that's really important. And external uh, battery for the 250 mile race. You need to have your phone, you need to have the battery. The map needs to be downloaded to the phone. Of course, a good pair of sunglasses, a whistle. Most good packs are gonna have a whistle and this one does. I like to bring a good solid whistle with me too. Toilet paper. This is a hand and body warmer. These are great too. I know for me, my sports bra gets super sweaty. And when I go into the night and I have a wet sports bra, that has been a challenge for me in races in the past. So you can take this, if you have a dry bandana, you can wrap this around, um, dry your chest, uh, put the warmer in there and put that against your body. You don't wanna put the warmer against your skin, but man, that can make a big difference. And then, then of course, just putting those in gloves, you know, holding that in a glove or in a pocket somewhere. And then blister pads. I don't get a ton of blisters. I've actually only gotten a handful in, in my career, but I bring them with me regardless because I know the few times that I've had them, man, it is not fun. I know they say not to take off your shoes while they're still tied. I've been trying to do that for a lot of years. <laughs> still not successful. <laughs> I usually do get to the trailhead wearing sliders. I'm either in sliders or some type of, of sandal. Um, yeah, do you do that too? I like to put my tr my trail shoes on when I get to the trail because then when I get off the trail and if my feet are muddy and you know wet and just all banged up, it's nice to get out of your trail shoes and slip into some sliders. So, yeah, today I'm gonna wear the Zigama. So I've I've um, been trying these out for Cocodona. Just as you can see, they're beefier. My go-to forever since 2013 has been the wild horse. These are my babies, but I love the wild horse and uh, it even feels good on the road. So I wear this a lot. So both of these shoes are probably what I'm gonna have uh, for race day. But anyway, this isn't a shoe review. <laughs> Food is essential in the pack. I am just showcasing here some of the things that I have been trying over the years. What I've learned is that if I can train my gut, especially in these weeks leading up to the race, that's only gonna help me move because the longer the race, the more important the eating is, believe it or not. So what I like to do uh, when, I, when I am packing, whether to train 
or to race is I just go off of, I want 300 calories an hour. Now, sometimes I might be only able to get in 200. That's kind of like the baseline that I always want to be at. I want to have at least 200. If I can get to 300, awesome. But when I pack, I just think 300 calories an hour. So if I plan on going into the mountains for six hours, I'm going to pack a minimum of 1800 calories and then I add an extra 400 um, or four to 600 on top of that. So I always pack extra food. Now I've got a good mix here. Electrolytes are just as important as your calories and a good electrolyte is going to have magnesium, potassium, and sodium in it. Um, and I have everything in here. I've got these food balls in here, gels, um, even Snickers bars. Man, I have found in the past year, the, I do so, so well on these, but um, I can't fuel on, on sugar for an entire duration of a race or training when I actually don't feel great when I do that. But these are great at the end. So when I ran Jackpot Ultra, I did sugar like the last like 20 miles. And the reason why was it was midnight. And so getting that extra punch of, of sugar for me at that time was great. But I, I need good real food and good calories as I move along. G1M Sport by BPN is a liquid calorie, carb, and electrolyte drink. This is really the backbone of my nutrition when I'm racing um, because it's the easiest on my stomach. So with food, obviously the bigger pieces, your body has to break that down. Your body is using energy to do that. It's working a little bit harder. And the later you get in a race, sometimes your body doesn't want to do that. And so uh, it's not uncommon that ultra runners get nauseous or that they throw up. And sometimes it's just the system is overworked. It's tired of breaking down food and running and um, pounding. So I like to have options. I like to kind of try everything, especially when I'm in the mountains, I try to eat more whole food and kind of make my body break this stuff down. It's amazing over the years how sometimes what I eat in races I've never had in training before. Like I might come into an aid station and be like, oh my gosh, a grilled cheese sandwich sounds amazing right now. And I'll eat a grilled cheese sandwich or I'll eat, um, gosh, when I was in, in France, I was eating sausage and cheese. I've never had that while training, but sometimes your stomach talks to you. Sometimes it's it wants something. So it's important that when you're practicing eating um, that you also realize that by doing that, you're allowing your body to get used to just breaking food down as you race. And so that's what I've been working on is I just want to eat a variety of foods so that um, whenever I come and do an aid station that I can be prepared to eat. And really the food is fuel. So at the end of the day, you just need to get calories in. This always needs to be in the pack and I always need to have extra. I love gear and I have tried and tested and experimented with so much stuff over the years. So I would love to know what your favorite piece of gear is or if there's something that you think I should try because there's a lot of cool stuff still coming out and I'm always up for learning and if there's something that's gonna work better for me, I wanna know about it. So let me know in the comments. All right, now before I end this episode, I do want to share with you one little trick that I do with my own pack. What I like to do is I like to treat my pack the same way I do my kitchen. So what I mean by that is your silverware always goes in the same drawer. Your cups always go on the same shelf. Your mugs always go on the same shelf. So you organize your kitchen by where you put all of your supplies. So in the same way, do that with your pack and it's gonna help you get in and out of the aid stations better. It's also gonna help your crew. So on the right pocket where I keep this bottle, it's always gonna be electrolytes. On the left pocket, this bottle is always gonna be a carb drink. This pocket is always gonna be fuel. And you can number your pockets too. You can call them pockets one, two, three, four. You can give them names. Um, and then this pocket is always going to be electrolytes. Now you can fill your pockets with, with whatever, however it is you wanna organize it. But what this does is that as I'm coming into an aid station, I go one, two, three, four, and I can just feel what is empty, what's full, and what do I need. And so as I approach that aid station, I can call those things out and I can get in and out of the aid station in 30 seconds. Because a course that has, whether it's eight aid stations or 20 aid stations, you stay in there even for two, three, four minutes, that's a lot of time that can be wasted throughout the entirety of a race. Now, sometimes it's wise to sit and do an aid station and take care of yourself. I do know that, but it's a lot easier when you go into an aid station 
with a plan and being organized, you know exactly what you want, you're gonna just be more efficient. So organize your pack um, in the same way that you do when you're training, when you're racing, and then make sure you let your crew know about it too so they understand your pocket system. So as you come in and they wanna help you out, they just know right away what every pocket needs. They know exactly what has been full, um, what has been lessened, and then you are just gonna be able to communicate with your crew better and you're gonna be able to get in and out of the aid stations that much more efficiently.